Hey guys and welcome to today's video where I am finally planting up the Biob Earth 125. If you haven't seen my unboxing and first impressions of this app controlled all in one enclosure then I'll leave a link to that video below. But without further ado, let's get into it. So let's start off with adding in the substrate. Now like the enclosure, Awaz did send me a few of their substrates and decorative pieces to use in the tank. This includes the drainage layer. So we have the jungle clay balls. These go on top of this foam piece, which I believe just stops anything dropping down into the heater or the fan that is down at the bottom of the tank. I did actually end up using all four bags, which in total was eight liters of clay balls. Next up, the substrate itself, I am using Jungle Mix. They do have sand and a moldable clay option, but since I'm aiming for a jungle-esque vibe, I am going to be using Jungle Mix. And like the clay balls, I added in all eight liters. I will also say that I do usually add a substrate barrier between the drainage and substrate, but I was told by Awaz that this wasn't necessary. So I figured, you know, let's give it a shot. Maybe it'll work, maybe we'll go horribly wrong, um, but that's what the follow-up review is for. Now, as I'm doing this, as I'm adding in the substrate, I do have a question for you guys. So if all goes well and the plants grow and everything, it'd be nice to have a little resident in here. Now, I'm only thinking of adding some kind of invert. Um, I don't want the invert to be able to asexually reproduce because I don't want to be overrun. Um, I don't want it to ruin the plants. Um, and if it benefits from high humidity, it doesn't mind getting misted. And since the substrate is quite deep, it enjoys burrowing. Um, what kind of invert do you think would work well in here? I'm thinking maybe some kind of millipede, the way I have heard that a lot of species tend to live in groups and therefore they may reproduce, but I'm not sure. Leave your suggestions below. Now, one issue I did find once I added in the substrate is this vent at the bottom kind of gets blocked. Now, I'm not sure if this is part of the cooling or heating system, but it is in a bit of an annoying place. So I try to move as much of the dirt away as possible and I'm sure it kind of blows outwards. So eventually the soil will move away from it but yeah that's a bit of a design flaw before i added any other substrate in here i wanted to check out some of the decorations Oaz sent so they sent me a piece called bark small i guess this is one that you would lay flat on the floor of the tank then we had the medium one which is probably my favorite out of the three i think it looks the most natural i think you could probably mount some air plants or bromeliads on here and then finally the large decorative piece which I feel could be paired up with a small one as a similar colour and style. By the way if you're wondering what that colourful thing was in the background uh, that's actually the reptile room lego wall. If you follow me on instagram you may know I've recently got into lego uh, but yeah if you're a channel member or a patron you get your name up on that lego wall and become part of the reptile room. Anyway, back to the build. So I decided to try out the medium decoration in the tank. Now first you have to unscrew this from the bottom of the packaging. I think they just do this so the decoration doesn't move around in the packaging and get damaged because it is quite a hefty piece. Now, as I said, it's got some weight to it. It is a nice piece, but I feel it looked kind of small and out of place in the tank. And personally, I do prefer using natural decorations. So I did end up going out and buying some cork. Um, but I feel like if you had a smaller tank, this would be a really cool centerpiece and as I said you could mount some plants on it. Next up I added the jungle bark, it's pretty much what it says on the bag, it's bark chips and I only needed one bag, this was plenty, it's about two litres. Once this was all in, I wanted to quickly see how much of the substrate would actually get covered when the rain system was on. So I did add some bottled water to the tank. Oaz do recommend using their own type of water, but I'll be honest, it's quite expensive. Um, so I did use the bottled water that I used with all my other tanks. I may come to regret this if it starts leaving marks on the tank uh, because it is made of acrylic, I believe. So trying to remove the watermarks without scratching it may be a problem. Anyway, the rain and fog did seem to cover a fair bit, but I do wonder whether I'm going to have to give this tank a good water once in a while or leave it up to the rain systems to do its job. We shall see. Uh, definitely subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss out on the update on this tank in the future. 
a little later on I went out and got some cork. I got these hollow pieces as I figured not only do they look cool but if I do end up getting some kind of ground dwelling invert in here they could definitely benefit from them. I then added a polka dot begonia as the main plant in here. They love high humidity and some people struggle to achieve this in their home. So I figured a tank where you can control the humidity, you know, this is a perfect combination. Though these plants can get big, so hopefully it spreads across the back of the tank and not too far upwards, otherwise I may need to swap it out. The next plants were pink and white photonias. Once again, these plants love humidity and have done well in my other tanks before. They can get quite leggy, but I have read if you keep them pruned, they should sort of thicken out rather than get leggy. So I definitely have to keep on top of that. And finally, I went out to our pond water feature thing outside and got some baby's tears. So originally we literally took little bits like this and placed them around our pond. And over a few months, they literally covered the entire area. They're kind of more like weeds. Like if you get a little, they'll just spread. So I placed them on the floor of the tank, hoping it will create some kind of carpet. Um, and as I said, around the pond, we literally place scraps like this. So hopefully it works, but only time will tell. I know they like to keep moist. So hopefully the tank provides that. Now it may look quite bare and spread out in here, but of all these plants, you know, they all tend to need room to grow. So, Instead of overplanting the tank and making it look fabulous straight away, I'm hoping it will grow into a fabulous tank. I then went on to give the tank a good water. Now, as I do this, we need to talk about the lid of this tank. This was definitely a pet peeve in my first video, and I know a lot of you guys agreed that it would be much nicer to have a tank that opens from the front. On top of it being kind of awkward to water, I did also find the lid fell in a few times like this before I added the plants in, thankfully. Uh, but yeah, I don't like that it can easily fall in because that unit is not light. It could definitely squish animals or plants. Now, obviously the only time this happens is if you're moving the lid around in a way it's probably not supposed to. So if you're just sliding it, it's okay, but I had it sort of on the edge, but yeah, it's a dodgy lid. It's definitely not my favourite. Another thing I found which I feel is more an issue for me because I'm used to photographing or filming tanks is uh, the tank is very reflective. This is going to happen anyway whether you have glass or acrylic but uh, usually when I'm filming I open the tank doors so we can actually see the tank without glare and obviously that isn't possible in here. Anyway, little rant over, I then went on to adjust the settings on the app. So if you watch my first video, you'll know the tank comes with a range of features that are all controlled by an app and you can adjust almost anything. I did find there was a little annoying part when I was trying to adjust the lighting or when I was trying to adjust the temperature or the rain, um, season to season. It wouldn't let me deselect the month we're currently in, which when I'm recording this is July. So every time I wanted to change a set of months, say I was changing the winter months, July was included in that. So I'm not sure if that's just a little glitch, but that was frustrating. Um, I did originally set the humidity in this tank to like 55%. I was reading the plants like it over 50%. But we live in England. This is a terrarium with frequent rain and fog. So the humidity was always going above that 55%. So I did end up setting it higher because, you know, <laughs> it is what it is. And as I said, these plants tend to love humidity. I did choose to turn off the UV and the temperature is fairly low. With the rainfall, I'm kind of going off what the app suggests for like a rainforest jungle setting, but I did lessen the amount of water in winter as I was reading you should do this with some of the plants I'm using. But we'll see how it goes. And if you're familiar with some of these plants and you have some advice, let me know. I can always go on the app and adjust my settings. But yeah, so this is a Biob Earth 125. I feel the proof is in the pudding now. I had some concerns in my initial video, but whether these plants grow and do well is left in the hands of this app controlling the tank. Now, as I said, I may need to go in and water the tank from time to time, but we'll see how this goes. And if I do choose to add any residents into the tank, I will do a little update video. But until then, check out my other videos and I'll see you when I do the review.